Welcome to Energy Talks, a regular podcast series with expert discussions on topics related to power system testing, data management, and cybersecurity in the power industry. My name is Scott Williams from the podcast team at Omicron, and I will be your host. Hello, everyone. The demands on the power distribution network of the future are high, and flexibility plays a crucial role. Experts predict a significant increase in the load on our power grids in the coming years. Increasingly, complex usage profiles will accompany this. Switching from conventional to digital substations offers many advantages and can help to meet the upcoming demands. In this Energy Talks episode, I am joined by my guest, Diego Gasca, who is an Omicron Regional Application Engineer for Protection and Power Utility Communication. He will talk with me about the rapid growth of digital substations in the power system. Diego describes the current trend of utilities moving from small pilot projects to ambitious large-scale projects and their challenges in making the transition from conventional to digital substations. He also highlights how Omicron is involved in the implementation not only as a supplier of products and solutions, but also as a provider of engineering services and knowledge transfer. Join us for a deeper dive into the project phases and learn what makes digital substations different from conventional ones. We will take a closer look at the areas of specification and design, testing and commissioning, and operation and maintenance. In this context, we will examine interesting use cases and real problems and their concrete solutions. Hello, Diego. Welcome to this episode of Energy Talks. Hi, Scott. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you again for taking the time to talk about the transition from conventional to digital substations. Diego, digital substations are not entirely new. So why are we talking about a turning point? That's true. The standardization is available for at least 20 years and many pilot projects out there. But recently, there are many factors driving the growth of digital substation. So uh, smart grid implementations or centralized and virtualized protections or integration with renewable energy sources or what about enhanced reliability and safety or cost saving over time, among other. So there are many factors in favor of digital substations. When you look at projects in the field, what is the development you've been seeing? Well, in the past, there were mostly isolated pilot projects. Now we see more large scale and ambitious projects. For example, Iceland electricity transmission operator decided to switch completely to digital substations. But it's not only Iceland. In general, there are multiple utilities currently defining their strategy for building only digital substations. Okay, so Diego, please tell us more about the project you mentioned in Iceland. I believe the power utility is called Landsnet. Why did the power utility Landsnet decide to switch completely to digital substations? To give the audience a general overview of their grid, it includes almost 3,200 kilometers of transmission lines, more than 320 kilometers of underground cables, and around 83 substations. An aging transmission system causing operational issues and transmission limitations. In Iceland, it is important to be able to control substations remotely to the extreme weather conditions. Besides that, consider that Icelandic transmission system is not interconnected with other countries. Okay, interesting. Sounds like a lot of challenges and an impressive scope of such a project. Diego, how do you get such an ambitious project started in the first place? I would say the management support within LastNet was a vital for the project. At the beginning, there are many questions and uncertainties, similar as with any other new technology. But a motivated team and the right partners play a crucial role, worth mentioning the relevance of a careful planning and design phase is the basis for the success of the entire project. It is expected to have many experts and contractors involved to gather skills and expertise. But in general, a project like this brings passionate electric, electrical engineers together with the common goal of building the grid of the future. Interesting. So, Diego, how and when did the partnership between Landsnet and Omicron begin? Omicron is well known as a testing solution provider. 
but not that much as a consultor. We met Lansnet during a conference where we were talking about fitness project, which is also other digital substation pilot project we participated. That was back in 2020. Okay. So what is it that Omicron can contribute to this kind of project? We have a team at Omicron providing services, mainly focused on four pillars, data management, protection testing and protection testing libraries, cybersecurity, and digital substations. In the digital substation area, we are covering specification and design, testing and commissioning, and operation and maintenance. Okay. Diego, to my knowledge, these project phases are well established for building substations. What is different for digital substations? Well, talking about the specification and design phase, the control and protection philosophy should be adapted to the new digital environment. In most cases, reducing components or enhancing functionalities. It is normally a long discussion until find the balance between get most of the advantages of digitalization but still keep the roots of protection concepts. Specify only 6150 compliance is not enough. Mm. Utilities really need to specify what are their functions they are looking for. It might be following the full top-down approach or just defining a list of capabilities. Diego, there must also be new challenges when it comes to testing and commissioning. Is that correct? Yes. Testing and commissioning, there are many improvements by moving to digital. There are new options like start testing from early stage with no devices by analyzing the SCD files or improve the FATs thanks to simulation options, then bring in a big cost reduction during on-site testing. Re the reusability of test plan during the system's life cycle and of course the time and risk reduction because of less hardwiring manipulation among others. Diego, can you please tell us more about the findings in the field? We have found interesting issues even before the FATs, just by analyzing the SCD file with the station scout, like swapped or missing signals. In the other side, interoperability is a fact between 61 and 50 devices and from different vendors. But from time to time, we have seen some surprising behaviors created because of the time synchronization and network delays is not working well. Mm -hmm. Interesting numbers related to time reduction during on-site testing. For example, testing a full bus bar protection with more than 80 test points in less than four hours. That is not reachable in a conventional substation. Okay. So, Diego, we haven't talked much about operation and maintenance. Are there any interesting changes in this area? It is mainly related to update the traditional practices to a new communication-based tasks. It requires training for the people and new tools. We are moving from periodic to monitoring-based maintenance. And the traditional procedures need to be updated to the new simulation and monitoring possibilities. Okay. How do Omicron's devices and solutions cope with all of these new requirements? Omicron is permanently adding new capabilities to the existing products and also launching new solutions to fulfill the market requirements. In digital substation, the most well-known products are the Neo 400 for network monitoring or our CMC and Test Universe with releasing tests with 61 and 50 capabilities or Station Scout for testing during the system lifecycle or a Station Guard as a functional monitoring tool. Okay. Diego, you gave us a very good picture of how Omicron can support utilities and customers to introduce digital substations. Can you give us a recommendation for those who haven't decided yet to move towards digital substations? The technologies has been tested by universities, utilities, and vendors. It works. Mm -hmm. The key point to have a success in this journey is to involve all the people into the process during the specification, the design, until the maintenance. That will be the recipe for not building just one pilot project. Instead, define the future of your substations. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Diego, I'd like to ask you a question about where our listeners can get more information about the tools you mentioned and also about making the transition to digital substations. All the information is available in our website, 
but also at, at every country, our customers can reach our direct sales people or our representatives offices. Very good. Okay. Diego, thank you very much for joining me for this episode of Energy Talks about the transition to digital substations and the power grid. It has been a pleasure, Scott. Thank you again. And a big thank you to our audience for listening to this episode of Energy Talks. We always welcome your questions and feedback. Simply send us an email to podcast at omicronenergy.com. Omicron has several years of experience in power system testing, data management, and cybersecurity in the power industry, and offers you the matching solution for your application. For more information, be sure to visit our website at omicronenergy.com. Please join us to listen to the next episode of Energy Talks. Goodbye for now, everyone. Mm-hmm.